to get through this video while he's taking a nap. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Yelena and if you're new here, I am a, a mom to two boys now. I have a toddler who is two and a half and also this is baby Easton. He is just a little bit over two weeks old. He was born on August 7th. So I am going to be sharing with you guys my birth story today. Being a second time mom, my birth stories are both really different. And this time around, it was very unexpected and it happened super fast. So I wanted to share with you guys because it was just like really crazy how everything happened. Let me just tell you that it was a very positive birth story, but there's just things like during COVID and things that were just very unexpected. So I wanted to share with you guys in hopes that it shows you that every birth story is different or you can be a second time mom and have a completely different birth story than your first birth. So I wanted to share with you guys. I was, let's see, I was 40 weeks and four or five days. So he was like four days overdue. I was due on the third. So he came on the seventh. So I was like four days past my due date. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the beginning. I had my parents fly into town in hopes of having him early. I actually thought that he was gonna come way earlier, like before we even had my parents fly out from California. They ended up just booking their flights for the first week of August so they can be here even if he he was here already. They just wanted to help out with their toddler and um whenever they came on the first week of august it was already let's see they were here sunday to the following sunday so it was like the first week of august and baby e was just not coming out he was very comfortable i went to my 40 week doctor's appointment and i for sure thought he was gonna be here because they did like the membrane sweep and my uh, uh, my doctor was like, okay, we'll only induce you if he doesn't come by this week. And so they scheduled my induction date for, I think it was like, since they were so backed up, it was the that, follow, that Friday. So I was due, I think on Tuesday and they scheduled the induction for Friday, which I really wanted to avoid because I just really wanted for him to come naturally without getting induced and... Um, Nothing I get against being induced. I know it's necessary in some cases, but it was just the fact that they were so backed up so they had to schedule it super early and I just had a feeling that he was gonna come um, without me getting induced. I just really wanted him to, so I was praying and hoping that he would come before the induction. Um, but anyway, that whole week I literally was like going for multiple walks. I was doing like all the labor inducing things at home. I was just, ready for him to come out and i was just like so uncomfortable and my family was here from across the country so i really wanted him to come and he was just so comfortable he didn't want to so we were just hanging out with my family and literally what that saturday so tuesday i was my due date and then wednesday thursday friday um i was just freaking out because i'm like oh my gosh my parents are leaving on sunday if they leave we have nobody to watch our toddler and it was just gonna i was gonna have to give birth alone and literally on um friday they called me or no thursday morning they called me and they said that they had to cancel my induction which i apparently is really common because they had to bring in the people that were like you know more in more need of giving birth so they have to make room for those people first and i just wasn't like a high risk pregnancy or anything so they were like okay we'll reschedule your induction for sunday and i was like okay this gives me some more time to try to you know go into labor and then um my parents were staying at the hotel nearby so friday night we said bye to my parents and we went on a really long walk and i also did like the midwife's brew where i just um did like the pineapple juice and castor oil which i know there's a lot of controversies and people are against it um do what you want to do it's your body so i'm not telling you go do it or not do it but that's what i did the night before i went into labor so this was friday night and i was already three days past due date and 
that night i woke up at like one something in the morning and i was just getting like contractions and i was like okay oh my gosh this is it and i was getting super excited but i was also getting contractions prior to that but i just had a feeling that this was it and it was finally my turn and i was so excited because my parents still had one more day left they were not leaving till sunday so this was what saturday morning oh yes yeah, so, so not Friday, so this was already Saturday um, at 1 a.m., right? Yeah, okay, so I woke up that uh, morning and I was um, having contractions. My husband was just sleeping next to me and I was like, I'm not gonna wake him up or worry him or make him think this is it because I'm just gonna like start doing stuff, start getting ready. And I could tell that these were different contractions than just like Braxton Hicks or just like, nor like regular contractions that I was having before that were not labor contractions um just by like the pain level and just how i don't know just something different you just i feel like you just know when it's different so i just knew this time it was different because normally i don't get woken up by contractions and all my other ones were just like random ones during the day so um i just knew it was different this time so i decided to get ready get the hospital bags all packed and making sure I had everything. I had everything packed, but I'm making sure I had like my final things um, packed up. And I uh, literally from one uh, something in the morning when I started timing my contractions, they were like, I can't remember. They started at less than 10 minutes apart for sure. And then they started getting a little bit, um, like a little bit closer and closer and a little bit more painful but i was still walking and breathing through them and i knew that this time around i wanted to wait at home as long as possible because last time with my first birth i went to the hospital too soon and you're just it's so unnecessary you're just literally laying there and, and this time around i was like i just want to go um as long as i can being at home being just you know preparing myself preparing my body and not have to lay in the hospital bed because once you get there and you get the epidural you're just kind of stuck there and you can't move for a long time so i was like i'm just gonna um get ready take my time and i started literally cleaning every inch of my house because i was like okay if these are real contractions and i'm gonna actually uh, go into labor i want to come home to a clean house so i started cleaning my house like a crazy person at one in the morning and I just started like literally cleaning the kitchen, the cupboards, the floors, like I mopped everything and I dusted everything. I was just going on like a cleaning spree <laughs> and I also wanted to see if these were real contractions so I just kept walking and walking and moving just to see if like they're gonna progress or if they were gonna disappear. So I kept timing them and at like oh my gosh i had a little bit of coffee already at that point but i didn't eat anything um just because you're not really supposed to eat a lot so i was just like okay i'm gonna wait and at that point i kind of knew when i hit like it was like 4 30 in the morning i was like oh my gosh my contractions started getting worse and they started getting closer together so i was like oh my gosh this is definitely it so I remember waking up my husband and I was like, okay, I think this is it, so I'm gonna go hop in the shower, um, but you might wanna start thinking about getting up. And I was like, I think I'll call my parents after I get out of the shower and call the doctor after I get out of the shower because at that point they were still manageable. And I have um, a pretty high pain tolerance. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take a shower and it's been already like a few hours since I've been timing my contractions. And they were definitely already like less than five minutes apart but they were still manageable so i was like i still have time to shower and get ready and literally as i got into the shower i was in so much pain my contractions started coming like that like literally less than two minutes apart like i'm not even kidding i had my phone sitting on my toilet and i couldn't even like i was trying to shave my legs and shave every everything and like take my time getting like taking my shower and i couldn't even like i couldn't even breathe or stand through the contractions like they came so fast like i think it was like with me cleaning for a few hours i was like i have time i'm fine and then my contractions just like boom and it started becoming like so so much like longer or the duration of them were so much longer and so much more painful and they were literally less than two minutes apart and then when i looked at my app like my list 
I literally had like over I think it was like almost a hundred contractions within that span of time when I woke up to it was like 4 30 in the morning it was crazy you guys like I'm telling you it it just like they sped up so fast they became so much more painful and um it's just like within the matter of like I don't even know not just like really really fast because uh, I was perfectly fine when I was cleaning and I was like okay I'm gonna hop in the shower as soon as I did it was like whoa my contractions just went crazy so I was trying to time them and like trying to get out of the shower really fast like pressing my phone really fast and timing them and then I'm like oh my gosh they're I'm literally gonna have to go to the hospital or I'm unless I'm or I'm gonna like give birth at home because they're just coming so fast and they're so painful and um so I quickly like literally like quickly finished shaving washing my hair trying to deal with the contractions and then hopped out of the shower and I was like babe oh my gosh I need to get up right now we need to start packing the hospital stuff and calling my parents so literally it was like 5 30 in the morning when I or I think it was like 5 5 30 in the morning when I called my parents and I was like you guys might want to get over here um they were only a few minutes away but I'm like I'm, I was still like telling them to take their time. I was like, oh, it's no rush if you guys want to go stop at Starbucks, even though it's like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if I'm going to end up giving birth on the floor or what's going to happen. I definitely should have like, I didn't think they were going to come so fast and be that painful where I thought I was going to be able to just take my time. Like I was already doing that for a few hours. I didn't think they were going to like just come so fast and start getting so painful so I was like trying to finish blow drying my hair I had my husband helping me trying to quickly finish getting ready while just dealing with these contractions that were coming like less than two minutes apart it was literally crazy so I called um called the hospital called my and then finally my nurse called me back she was like yeah you might want to go in um because these are really close together so at that point we just knew it was time i made sure everything was ready for my toddler my parents came over and they were here and i finished getting ready thankfully i was able to finish my hair and everything blow drying it and we got all of our stuff and headed to the hospital um and then i had also planned on my mom being at the hospital because they allowed two people that could be there with you during labor and uh, um i just knew i was like okay i'll call her once we're getting closer and we know a lot more and we know like how dilated i am and when i'm getting closer to giving birth we'll have my dad drop her off and have my dad stay with my toddler so as we got to the hospital we like my contractions at that point were super painful i mean i was literally like I could barely even breathe i was like in so much pain and they whenever they checked me so we got there and they brought us back in or brought us to our like room where they check you not like your permanent room where you are actually staying in but your room before you go into the other room and they i'm like losing my train of thought because he's just so cute and he's making these cute little noises oh he has so much hair but anyway I'm trying to get through this so it's not super super long for you guys but so they checked me and i was already at what five centimeters so i was already pretty dilated but um my contractions were coming like less than two minutes apart and they were lasting pretty long so um at that point it was like i think it was 6 30 in the morning and they said that they were switching shifts so the nurses were the night nurses were leaving and they were getting new nurses and oh my gosh that was like the worst timing possible for us to get to the hospital it was was during shift change because it was just craziness they were for one really really packed they said that they had so many people like just giving birth that weekend so it was craziness and um I literally was like laying there in pain for over an hour um because they were like yeah we'll get that epidural ready and we'll have the doctor come and check you or the midwife come and check you and i was laying there for over an hour like i couldn't could barely breathe because the contractions were just getting so painful like this didn't happen in my first birth like i got the um when i got to the hospital i was at a four but my contractions were still like I mean they were painful but i was still able to manage them 
and um, I got the epidural really really fast right after I got to the hospital so I did not have to like wait that long to get the epidural but this time around like I was literally waiting there for so long you guys like I'm not even kidding and they were just getting so painful finally like when the midwife came and checked me she was like we'll put you on fluids because we want to make sure you're fully hydrated before you get the epidural and then we'll do all the shift changes and we'll find you we'll get you a room ready and set up so i'm still waiting i think i was in that room for a couple hours before i actually got to my actual room so by that point it was like eight something when we got to my room and then i um was just like laying in the bed in pain and trying to like just breathe through my contractions and um they were like okay so we'll get the we'll get the doctor to come in and do your epidural or the anesthesiologist or how do you say that word i don't know anyway they're like okay so we're gonna get him to come in so they phoned him they were like okay like this patient is ready for the epidural and um oh my gosh they were so backed up you guys someone like went into an emergency c-section so my doctor had to go and help the c-section and i was literally laying there for so long and so much pain so this process was just like so dragged out i by that point i was like okay i might as well just give birth naturally because i was in so much pain like my pain levels were like at a nine or a ten like my body just like my insides felt like they were just it, it was painful and i have a really high pain tolerance so at that point i was just like oh my gosh like if he doesn't come soon i'm just gonna end up giving birth naturally because i was just in so much pain and um literally like over an hour went by and finally it was like i think it was like i don't know 10 or 10 or 11 at that point i mean he came like really really late it was like a couple hours or so and um by the time he came i was already in a lot of pain so i like didn't even feel the epidural like it was like nothing to me and um right after the epidural she said that it can kind of like slow down or my nurse said that it could slow down your contractions so they gave me a little bit of pitocin to kind of speed up or make sure the contractions were still going and speed up the process a little bit and then um they did like the birthing ball thing where or the peanut ball where I just like laid on the peanut ball and made sure that my epidural was like even um because you have to go from like switch from side to side to make sure it's like working properly and is even so um by that point i just laid there for a little bit it was like a little bit over an hour i think and it was becoming to so we got there at, like 6 30 in the morning and then around so the midwife came finally i was laying there with the pitocin and the epidural for a little bit and then the my nurse was like okay so like you can relax take a nap the midwife will come check you and she'll also probably break your water because my water never broke she's like yeah the midwife will come check you and then we'll you'll probably have plenty of time to take a nap and rest for the rest of the day and just see how you progress which was the case in my first birth I was laying there for a long time before I actually became dilated to a 10 and then literally this was like 12 p.m. on Saturday and I think it was 12 or this like past 12 p.m. on Saturday and my midwife came and she literally she was like okay I need the little tool to break her water and she was checking me and as she was checking me my water just broke so she didn't even need the little tool whatever it's called and the nurse was like okay like you don't need it um, my water broke and then she was checking to see how um how dilated i was <laughs> and she's like oh she's at a seven and she's like she she'll be like giving birth soon and then literally like a minute later she was like um checking again and she was like Oh my gosh, she's at a 10. We're gonna like give birth right now. She's she's ready. She's ready to push right now. And I was like in so much shock. I literally was laying there. I'm like, what just happened? My husband and I are just like looking at each other, and the nurse is like in shock. She's like, why did like she's like, how did that happen? Um, this was literally like 12, I think like 12 10. And I had planned on like calling my mom, having my mom come over and be there for the birth. I was like 
thought they had plenty of time she's like oh you're at a seven and then like all of a sudden like two seconds later she's like oh you're at a ten okay like let's push i was just like what like i was not prepared for it mentally i was just like oh my gosh why did it just happen so fast and um right before that i think i had a clip of my husband recording me saying like are you ready to have a baby and um then you can hear my midwife saying like yeah where she's ready like she's ready to go and literally um this was like almost 12 15 i pushed i think like three times during one contraction and he came out like it was crazy he came so fast you guys like with my firstborn i pushed for a little bit under 30 minutes but it was still like you know it felt like a long time this time around it, would, it took one contraction to get him out i literally pushed like three times and he was out like it was so crazy like it happened so fast and then i was crying it was really emotional and oh, i'm gonna cry again now um just reliving it back it's just like so crazy and surreal how fast it happened and um it's crazy because I had talked to my mom like right before that and I was like telling her oh yeah we're probably gonna be here for a while like I'll let you know what's happening um so you can come to the hospital and then just everything happened so fast and I was calling her back and faced him and I was showing Easton and I was like he's here and my mom was like in shock and then the nurse was in shock she was like I've literally never seen this happen before like how fast you dilated and how fast everything just happened I mean it was so crazy and so unexpected he came at literally 12 15 p.m on saturday august the 7th and he weighed seven pounds he was 20 inches long and he's just so perfect um it was just the most positive birthing experience my nurses my midwife they were absolutely amazing and i'm just so thankful to have them um or I'm so thankful that they were there because they were just amazing. Um, yeah, it was pretty crazy. I'm still like to this day shocked telling that story because just like how fast it happened. I'm sure there's like more shocking stories and crazy stories out there, but it just like happened so crazy and so fast. I know that people say your second birth, like it's a lot quicker, which definitely was a lot quicker in my case, but it was just like so crazy how fast it happened and how he came and um um what else was i gonna mention there's no tearing everything was really perfect and healthy for me i got really lucky and i feel really blessed to have a healthy baby and everything went well and he just you know he's the best little eater he was the best little eater from the start and it's just been like an amazing little boy and um that's basically my birth story. My parents got to come to the hospital. They were switching on and off like with the two visitor policy. They were switching on and off so they literally were able to come and spend time with him. And it was just crazy how fast it happened and like the fact that it happened the day before my parents left. And I'm just, it was just such a good experience and such a good, um second birth experience positive epidural experience i mean everything was really good um except for like the pain from the contractions for those hours that were like leading up to the epidural into the birth but honestly now thinking back on it i feel like i could have just done it naturally and i think for my next birth if we have a third baby i'm definitely gonna do like an unmedicated birth just because i feel like my body is really strong enough to handle it this time around and just my pain tolerance and just being able to i don't know i just want to experience it all with that okay camera cut me off for a second i think my video is getting too long but yeah like i said next time i think i definitely want to do it an unmedicated birth and um yeah but Whew, that was a lot i hope you guys enjoyed my watching my birth story this was such a positive experience and positive birth story happened really fast it was very unexpected um very different from my first birth um they were i mean they were both good births and positive but the length process is just this one was really fast and really unexpected just how everything happened if you guys are interested in watching my birth vlogs from my firstborn and this time around i'll link those down below for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video watching my birth vlog or my labor and delivery birth story i definitely love watching these just 
to see like what women experience and how different their labor and deliveries are and it's just fun to look back on as well so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed the having little easton james <laughs> in the video just snoozing away and if you guys are not subscribed already please subscribe to my channel i post videos all the time i'm a stay-at-home mom like i said and i do a lot of motherhood lifestyle kind of videos so if you guys like those kind of videos go ahead and hit that subscribe button helps me out a lot and i love growing my little community here on youtube so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed today's video enjoy watching this birth vlog story and i'll see you guys in my next video thank you so much for watching bye guys Oh.